Welcome to the Parsha Perspective. Each week, we will delve deep in a weekly Torah portion to find a practical and insightful way to enhance your daily life. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Shalom Yemini. Each week, we will look into the weekly Torah portion to find inspiration that will complement your daily life and intensify your connection to God. This week's Parsha Perspective is sponsored in the memory of Shlomo ben Edward. May his soul be uplifted and his memory a blessing. This week is a double Torah portion and the completion of the Book of Ayikra, Parshas Bahar and Bechukaisai. Our Parshas begin with an overview of the laws of Shemitah and Yavu. Shemitah is a seven-year cycle in which we may farm the land for six years. However, in the seventh year, we must let the land rest. The Yavu cycle, which also requires letting the land rest, is the first year after seven Shemitah cycles. During that time, all Jewish slaves must be released and all properties are reverted back to the original owners. The Torah then lists the amazing rewards that Hashem will bestow upon us for following the Torah and listening to His mitzvahs. However, the Parsha also informs us of the punishments that will be given if we disobey God's commandments. However, a question comes to mind. Our Parshas begin with the Pasuk, Vaidabar Hashem al Moshe Bahar Sinai Lemar. And God spoke to Moshe on Mount Sinai, saying, Daber al Bene Israel of Amart Alehem, Kisavayo la Arts Asher Ninais al Lechem, Veshavisa Arts Shabbos la Hashem. Speak to the Jewish people and tell them that when you enter the land that I am giving you, the land shall rest a sabbatical for God. For six years you may sow the land and prune your vineyards and gather its produce. However, in the seventh year, the land shall have a complete rest, a sabbatical for God. You may not sow your field, and nor may you prune your vineyards. But weren't all commandments given to us at Har Sinai? Why does the Torah specifically single out the mitzvahs of Shemitah and Yaifu? Rashi, amongst many other commentaries, give an explanation. He explains that the reason the Torah singles out the mitzvah of Shemitah and Yoivu is to teach us that just like Shemitah and all of its regulations were given at Mount Sinai, so too all mitzvahs and their nuances were given to Moshe Rabbeinu at Har Sinai. This rationale applies to all mitzvahs, whether they were a part of the Ten Commandments or clearly detailed in the Torah. They were all given to us at Har Sinai. As Davra Melech so famously wrote in Kahelis, Ein chadash tachas hashamash. They were nothing new under the sun. Sometimes they're a phenomenon of which people say, look, this is new. And they shall be told that it has been already occurred long time ago. However, the Lubavitcher Rebbe gives a deeper and more powerful explanation. He explains the reason that the Torah distinguishes Shemitah for it teaches us how to fulfill this important mitzvah. Because the resting of the land during Shemitah requires a vast amount of trust and belief in Hashem. And this is why the Torah mentions Har Sinai with Shemitah. For Har Sinai teaches us that we should have a slight ego and Jewish pride to get the courage to stand out from the crowd and serve God. As the Gemara in Saito writes, from the fact that Hashem decided to give the Torah on Har Sinai, which was a little mountain, but a mountain nevertheless, we learn that a Torah scholar should have a small ego. The reason is so he can have ambitions in his learning and strive to help and influence others as well. However, there is a fine line between arrogance and an ego that is balanced with the trust and belief that God indeed runs this world. Since a large ego is the greatest enemy opposing a real relationship with God. As Shlomo HaMelech writes in Mishlei, Ta'avas Hashem kol ga'av leif. Every haughty heart is an abomination to God. In our daily life, it is imperative that we understand that it takes nothing to stand on the sidelines with the rest of the masses. But it takes real courage and determination to defend your beliefs and values to an ever-growing opposition. However, that is when your true self comes out and your soul shines. There's an amazing quote that I once heard. It is easy to stand with the crowd. However, it takes true courage to stand alone. Have a great weekend and good Shabbos. Thank you for tuning in to The Parsha Perspective. Check out our website, theparshaperspective.com. Send thoughts and comments to theparshaperspective at gmail.com. Till next time, thanks for listening.